Now, the Conservative leadership race draws to a close today. By midday, we will know who our next Prime Minister will be. But they're going to have to hit the ground running. I'm joined now by Eleanor Penny of Navarra Media and Tom Harwood of Guido Fawkes. Give us a sense of the news from across the political spectrum about today's big announcement. Good morning to you Good both. Good morning. Um, we're pretty certain we know what name is going to be drawn out of that hat today. Um, Eleanor, your initial thoughts ahead of what looks like a Boris Johnson-led government. Well, I find it's really astonishing that a Prime Minister is being elected to overhaul our economy and our society in one of the biggest economic and constitutional changes in Britain's history, and he's not being elected by the British people. He's being elected by an unrepresentative sample from the Conservative membership, which is about 0.2% of uh, the general population. And for me, that's a real condemnation of our democracy, right? Well, those we are the rules. Having... That is the democratic process. Sure, but take back control. I think it's fair to say that, that didn't mean hand over power to a bunch of barely elected Etonites to let them reshape the country for how they feel it is. And I think a lot of people at home are thinking, hang on a second, I want to get a say in how the future of this country looks. OK, Tom, do you think that would be the case if, say, for instance, Jeremy Hunt's name was to be announced today? Because that does seem to be the overwhelming <laughs> feeling to many people when they say Boris Johnson will be the next Conservative Party leader and therefore the next Prime Minister. I'm not sure Jeremy Hunt ignites the same kind of feeling. No, you're right, he doesn't. And I think it would be extraordinary if we had a Prime Minister who, three years after the referendum, we had another Prime Minister who didn't vote for the result they're trying to implement. Mm. I think we're all thinking that Boris Johnson will get in today and that will be a massive relief to 52% of the country people who voted for this result three years ago now that still hasn't been implemented and want someone who believes in it, want someone who has that burning passion to deliver it in their heart, not out of a sense of duty, but out of a sense that it's the right thing to do for the country. And that will change everything, that attitude in number 10, that optimism, that boundless optimism that's been missing from politics the world over. We've had pessimism, we've had fear, we've had all of these dour politicians mm. for the last three years and it's about time to have some fun back okay. in number 10. Belief, optimism, fun, is that going to be enough, Eleanor, to make any difference when it comes to Brexit? Because a new Prime Minister, but same old problems. Uh, Boris Johnson said, I don't want tweaks to the deal. He wants wide sweeping changes, a new deal. But is he going to get that? Because the EU have already said you, you, you won't get anything. Yeah, I'm afraid macho posturing and um, sheer blind optimism isn't going to uh, have much flack with the EU. Unfortunately, we live in the real world. And in the real world, the EU have repeatedly said that the kind of platform that's being offered by Boris Johnson, the kind of deal that he's looking at, um, is just not going to be acceptable to EU negotiators. Because on the one hand, he has the DUP saying that they absolutely want to get rid of the backstop, and obviously he is dependent on them for his working majority in Parliament. And on the other hand, you have the EU, who is absolutely firm that they don't want a hard border and also that any kind of open negotiations will be dependent on movement on the single market and the customs union. And this is precisely the point at which I'm absolutely astonished at the contention that Boris Johnson is some kind of true believer in Brexit. A few days before the referendum, he had a column ready to go talking about why we should vote Remain. And during the referendum, he was saying that most people want some kind of version of the single market. He is tacking to the far right simply because he knows that that's the thing that's most likely okay. to get him elected. Well, the thing is, he's going to have to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the EU to get what he wants, which is, you know, movement on Brexit. But, Tom, it's interesting, like, a quote from Nigel Evans speaking to Newsnight last night on Boris. He said he will be going in there, into number 10, with at least half a dozen knives already in his back. He'll be going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the EU, but also toe-to-toe -to -toe with MPs. There have already been resignations. We're expecting more today. So he's got a domestic fight on his hands. That's right. It is a not ideal situation in Parliament, to put it mildly. I think a lot of people around here will be breathing a sigh of relief that recess starts on Thursday. So as long as he can get through that first day and a half as Prime Minister, um, he, will, he will be able to then ride out the summer recess. If that's when the renegotiation will happen. That's when the those beginning, um, those talks are starting to be opened up with the Europeans. Mm. That will be the crucial point and thankfully there won't be too many parliamentary manoeuvres that can happen in that time. However, there will be increased pressure starting from September, October and that's when number 10 needs to get creative. The previous number 10 was very reticent to use any sort of mechanisms in the same way that Remainers in Parliament have been breaking with convention, using extraordinary tactics in order to deliver their preferred outcome. Number 10 
held back and didn't use any of the same tactics. And I think that this number 10 will be willing to use those tactics and that will change everything. Uh, cartoon in the Times today pretty much sums it up, whether it is Jeremy Hunt or Boris Johnson, whoever were to get the job is taking on what they've depicted today as a poison chalice. Alan Duncan uh, was talking to Sky News um, yesterday and he said that he thinks Boris Johnson is living on a knife edge. Eleanor, before he's even walked through the doors of number 10, a lot of people are saying he might not, he might not be there that long, the cards are stacked against him. I mean, as we've seen in the past year, um, Conservative Prime Ministers have been pretty good at hanging on in there, even when um, everything about their leadership and everything about their tenure in office implies that really they should step aside and let someone else have a go at ruling this country for the better. Um, however, I think what um, everyone's very um, right mm. to be pointing out is that the task of delivering Brexit is far from as simple mm. as Boris Johnson and his team are making out. How's he going to unite people, Tom? Because obviously Alan Duncan resigning um, and walking out, saying he thinks the difficulties have increased, not decreased, as a result of having a leadership contest. There's been resignations in this build-up to power for Boris Johnson. If his name is announced before midday today, there could be more today. How does he unite the party? Well, I think everyone was surprised by just how much he united the party in the first stage of the leadership contest. He got more than half of MPs, which is something that no-one would have thought would be possible just a few months ago and if he wins today he will have that endorsement of the membership as well which is crucial it's a member-based party MPs will be looking towards the people who keep them in in power the people who select them for their seats so those are two important things to unite the party but when but you've crucially, got the likes of Philip Hammond, David Gork, Rory Stewart all saying that that they won't serve under uh, Boris Johnson in, in a cabinet and they'll be handing in their resignation. That, that doesn't look good, does it? Well, I think it's probably right that we have a cabinet that believes in the project mm. that, the, that is the number one thing that the government is trying to do. Mm. But also, these aren't people saying they'll resign from the party. They're not going to leave the Commons. I think when, we're, when, like we're, facing, him. when we're facing um, a proto-Marxist on, op, on the opposition benches, that focuses minds. And okay. I think the number one task that Tories have is keeping Jeremy Corbyn out of power and that will factor into their calculations. Okay, Tom Harwood, uh, Eleanor Penny, thank you very much for your thoughts this morning ahead of that big announcement uh, before midday today.